let me tell you about Claire Gesso as it's often a bit of a mystery product, but a word of warning here. If you love collage and layering different mediums, this might be your next favorite product. Clear Gesso definitely has got the potential of changing lives. Clear Gesso in a jar, it looks uh, quite milky. So you can see, very milky, almost white, but it's perfectly clear after drying. So that's good. Uh, don't mistake clear gesso for gel medium. They are two very different animals. Now remember that the main difference is that gel is glossy and it doesn't give you that tooth, that grip. Clear gesso will give you a very, very matte surface. Not every clear gesso has a smooth finish though. My favorite smooth clear gesso is the one made by Prima Marketing uh, or Smooth Holbein Clear Gesso. That's also pretty good. Others are often more gritty, which is excellent, fabulous. If you want to, if you're looking for that texture and if you want to use pastels or crayons on top, but not really so good when you want to do watercolors or play with some very fine pens. Let me show you the great, massive, huge difference that a layer of clear gesso makes. So this is a magazine cover. It's always very glossy, yeah? Magazine covers are always very glossy, but you could, you know, do the same technique on photographs, for instance. So I've applied a thin layer of clear gesso onto this side. And here, this strip is just as it was, just glossy, straight from the shop. <laughs> Um, and you can see I have some watercolor pencils and I'm trying to draw on that glossy surface <laughs> to leave some sort of a mark but not much there really and it's really easy to wipe off it's it's not gonna work but here where I have clear gesso you can hardly see any difference it is a bit more matte but then look for my look at my pencils I'm pressing it very lightly and it just it just goes it's great so that's a really, really good thing to have. And equally, clear gesso could be also applied to the glossy surface of your dried heavy body acrylic paints. I often do that when I want to add some pastels or pencils on top of acrylic paint. So here I've prepared a, a sample. This is acrylic paint. This is golden heavy body. So they have quite a glossy finish. Of course, we will be talking about acrylics, but not today, but there are some acrylics that have more chalky finish, but right now I'm focusing on those that are glossy. So you see there is some gloss to it, definitely. Uh, and I have pastels here, yeah? Soft to dry pastels, I love using them. So that's how it looks. It wipes off really easily from that glossy surface. It doesn't also look that beautiful. I mean, it looks okay, but the mark isn't that as I would like it to be. So here I have some clear smooth gesso. That's the Holbein one. It comes in a pouch. I don't find it very easy to use because it's quite runny. I might put it in a jar later when I find a jar. Okay, so just a little bit of that clear gesso. I'm going to spread it with that silicone brush, but you know, anything will do. Just a plain um, stiffer bristle brush will be fine. Okay, too much on my book. I'm going to dry it very quickly with a heating tool, which you can definitely do. Okay, so this is dry now. It's a little bit more matte, but it didn't change the look of acrylic paint. And here I have the same pastel and you see it's an entirely different um, result, really. So the pastel feels more opaque, yeah, because it has a, it has a tooth <laughs> to adhere to. So that's really, really good. I always do that in my art journals.